Hi, we're going to simplify rational expressions. Rational expressions um, is merely a fraction of polynomials. So you have a polynomial on top, you have a polynomial on the bottom, it's a fraction, um, and that's a rational expression. We're going to do lots of things with rational expressions. We're going to add them, subtract them, multiply, divide them, but in this case I'm dealing with one fraction, um, a, a polynomial on top, polynomial on the bottom. I'm going to factor them and then cancel stuff out. All right, so step number one says factor everything. So the way I'm going to treat this is, is, it, is as if the top is its own factoring problem and the bottom is its own factoring problem. You're going to find here as, as I go through um, the notes and the few example problems that simplifying rational expressions is really just factoring and crossing stuff out. It's 95% factoring and then a little bit at the end. All right, so let's start with the top. I have x squared minus 9. So x squared minus 9 factors down to x plus 3 and x minus 3. Difference 2 squares. I can't do GCF. There's nothing in common between x squared and 9. So it is two terms, so I'm going to apply the difference 2 squares. Okay, I'm done factoring the top. Now I go to the bottom. All right, on the bottom, I can't factor x plus 3. I can't do GCF. Can't do difference 2 squares. Some are difference 2 cubes. It's uh, two terms, so I can't use slide and divide. So I'm just going to leave that as x plus 3. All right, step number two, cancel out all loners and groups. This is a really important topic here. A loner is, um, let's say, like 2x squared y. That's made up of a bunch of loners. What's the difference between a loner and a group? A group has plus and minus signs in it. So right here, I have x plus 3. That's a group. x minus 3, that's a group. I cannot break up, for instance, like the x plus 3. I cannot break up the x plus 3 into x and 3. It is x plus 3. Okay? They're that The plus and minus signs act as a handcuff, and you cannot break them apart. Okay, so up here with the loners, I can break them apart. Um, that's a 2, a couple x's, and a y. And I can cross them out individually because there's no plus or minus signs in that, in that uh, monomial. Um, but down here when there's plus and minus signs, I treat those as groups. All right, so I'm going to cancel out all loners and groups. So I have x plus 3 and x minus 3 on top, and on the bottom I have x plus 3. So I'm looking for things that are the same on top and bottom. And right here I see x minus 3, and, or I'm sorry, x plus 3 and an x plus 3. They're the same things. So if I was to simplify a fraction like 4 over 4, 4 over 4 is equal to 1. So I can cancel them out, but I'm not really getting rid of them. They're just simplifying down to 1. And anything times 1 is just whatever you're left with. So I can go like this. x plus 3 over x plus 3 is 1. And 1 times x minus 3 is all I have left. So I have x minus 3 left over. And that's step number 3, which is clean it up. On top, I have x minus 3. On the bottom, I really have a 1, but on the, I don't really need to write the 1 on the bottom. Because, like, you would never write 5 over 1. You would never see that. It's really just 5. Okay, and the same thing's going on here. So I have x minus 3, and that's my final answer. Okay, we're going to simplify 4x plus 8 over 5x plus 10. When I simplify a rational expression, I basically have two factoring problems. One on top, one on the bottom. I factor the top completely like the bottom isn't there. I factor the bottom completely like the top isn't there. So let's start with the top. All right, so I always start with GCF. So I look at both of those terms, 4x and 8, and I see, um, can I take anything out of both of those terms? And I see that there is a 4 in common in both of those terms. So I'm going to pull a 4 out in front of the parentheses. That's all that's left, or that's all that I can take out. It's the biggest thing I can take out. So now I'm going to open my parentheses, and I have 4x plus 8, and I'm going to divide both of those terms by 4. So 4x over 4. Those go away, so I'm just left with a 1. Um, plus 8 over 4 is 2. All right, so now I go to the bottom. I'm done with that. Now I go to the bottom. I can't factor what's left in the parentheses, so I'm going to go to the bottom. So now I do the same thing. I look at both those terms and see if I can bring anything out that's in common. And it looks like there's a 5 in common in both of those terms. Open my parentheses. So 5x plus 10. I'm going to divide both of those by 5. Uh, 5 over 5 is 1. So 1x, and then 10 over 5 is 2, so x plus 2. I can't factor x plus 2 anymore. All right, now that's most of the work. Now I just have to cancel out anything that's in common. 
All right, I see an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. I can cross out those groups because they're exactly the same. If it was x plus 2 on top and x minus 2 on the bottom, I could not do anything with it. It's either all or nothing. So I'm going to cross out x plus 2 over x plus 2. That's 1. 4 fifths does not reduce. So my final answer is 4 fifths. Uh, before I start this example, I just uh, wanted to give you a little random fact. Um, my brother's name is Rob, and as we were growing up, his nickname was Goose. I have no idea why, but he somehow had the nickname of Goose. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this rational expression. Now, what you'll notice about this one is there's no plus and minus signs. These are a bunch of loners. Loners on top, loners on the bottom. All right, so none of this stuff is tied together. Um, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to start with the coefficients. Okay, so I have 8 over 24. So I'm basically going to reduce that as if the variables are not there. So 8 over 24 reduces to 1 third. Okay, so now I'm going to concentrate on the uh, variables. So I have a squared on top and a on the bottom. So that means I have two a's, a times a on top and one a on the bottom. So I'm going to simplify those. So in order to simplify them, I can just subtract the exponents. So 2 over 1, so 2 minus 1 leaves a on top, a to the first on top. So, and you can think about it this way, where are the extra a's? Well, there's two on top, one on the bottom, the extra one is on the top, so I'm going to stick the a on the top. All right, now I go to the b's. I have one b on top, three on the bottom, so um, I have extra b's on the bottom. How many do I have? I have two extra b's on the bottom, so I'm going to go b squared like that. Now I want to clean it up a little. You usually aren't going to write a one um, as a coefficient for any of those terms. So I'm going to put just an a on top because 1a and a are the same thing over 3b squared and that's my final answer. All right, you can see this rational expression is bigger than the other ones we've done. It's a little tougher. All right, so I'm going to factor the top, factor the bottom. So I have plus and minus signs here, so I'm treating these as groups. All right, so the first thing I do when I have a group like this is I'm going to um, try GCF. All right, so it looks like, as far as the numbers go, I have 5, 5, and 30. It looks like the biggest thing I can take out of all three of those terms is a 5. I can't take any x's out because this last term here does not have an x associated with it. So it looks like I'm done. That's my GCF is 5. All right, so I'm going to open my parentheses. Leftovers go inside the parentheses, so I'm going to divide each um, term here by 5. So 5x five squared over 5. Fives go away. They simplify to 1, so I have x squared left. Minus uh, 5 over 5 is 1, so I'm left with an x, so minus x, and minus 30, 30 divided by 5 is 6, so minus 6. Okay, so I'm actually not done here. I have to keep factoring what's left in the parentheses, so I'm actually going to continue this down here underneath. So I have a 5 out front, and I'm going to do slide and divide. Now there's no, well there is a coefficient in front of the x squared, but it's 1, so I don't have to multiply that coefficient times a 6. I can just go ahead and find my factors of 6. So that's 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. It looks like I'm going to use 2 and 3 because I have to add and subtract to get a negative 1. All right, so I'm going to open up my parentheses and I have an x and an x, a 3 and a 2. I have to add and subtract them to get a negative 1, so minus 3 plus 2. And now I'm finished with the top because I can't factor x minus 3. I can't factor x plus 2. All right, I'm done with the top. All right, so let's go to the bottom. Let me go back up top here. It looks like, as if I can do GCF, it looks like I can. I can divide those both by 10. So I'm going to bring out a 10. And that leaves x squared minus 9 on the bottom. All right, well, I have to look at the parentheses, see if I can keep factoring it. It looks like I can. That is difference of two squares. A is x, B is 3, uh, so now I have to do difference 2 squares, the 10 hangs out in the front, and I have x plus 3 and x minus 3. I'm done factoring the bottom, I can't factor anything else in any of those parentheses, so now I start canceling stuff out. So I'm looking for things that are the same on top and bottom, and it appears that the x minus 3's simplify to 1. Now I cannot say x over x, see I have x plus 2 and x plus 3, I can't say x over x is 1, I can't cancel them because I can't cancel out parts of a group, it has to be all or nothing. Alright, well I look at my loners out front, I see 5 tenths, oh 5 tenths is really 1 half, 
So I can write 1 over 2, and it looks like I have x plus 2 on top and an x plus 3 on the bottom. And if I really want to clean it up, I can get rid of that 1 on top. So I have x plus 2 on top and 2 over x plus 3 on the bottom. Now, if you kept the 1 there and use that as your final answer, that's fine. Um, technically, it's still correct, but you're probably not going to see that written anywhere. Um, it would probably look like this answer right here. And I can't cancel out the 2s because x plus 2 is, is handcuffed together. I can't cross out the 2s. I can't get rid of parts of a group. So that's my final answer.